Hi everybody! Welcome back to my Linux command line tutorial in which I'm explaining um, command line basics, yeah, so terminal and console stuff that you're that you can use on in your Linux terminal or mostly even in your Unix terminal if you're on a Unix. Um, today we're going to see how you can chain together multiple commands um, which makes them really powerful and, and that lets you lets you create very arbitrary powerful specialized um, command chains that do very useful things. Um, let's start with a, with an example. Well first first of all I have to explain the concept of um, standard input and standard output at least. Um, each command that you're running has a standard input channel, a standard output channel and a standard error channel. Um, when I'm typing a command, or let's say, yeah, like for some example this ls command, then what I see here is that the result of the command gets printed to the controller. Since I'm running this command from this terminal, it means that the standard output channel for this command is again my terminal. Um, in our first session we've seen things like the output redirection. Let's say we can redirect the output to a file. Now the stuff we've seen with here before should be in this file now. And we see there's this file and when we print the contents of it we see it's exactly the stuff that would otherwise uh, have been printed on the terminal. So this is the first thing how you can um, change the behavior of a command in this in this terminal by telling it hey don't print your stuff to standard output which would be my terminal but print it to a file or redirect it into a file. Now there's another thing um, for example let's say or what we what we've seen before is we've seen the cat f uh, uh, command which usually takes a parameter uh, a file name or several file names and it prints both um, you can also call it without a file name which se seems uh, to be quite uh, useless at first but what happens then is the cut command opens its standard input which again since I'm running it from my terminal window the standard input for the cut command is again my terminal window and it expects some input from this uh, standard input channel. So when I'm typing stuff here for each line that I'm typing when I press enter it gets printed again. So by the way you can press control D to say end of file which means which is basically the same um, as if the, the file uh, had ended. Um, okay, so now what does that mean? It means that, um, or maybe another step, you can also, instead of specifying a file directly, directly, which is a feature of the command cut, you can also redirect standard input like this. So we don't use the greater sign like for, for redirecting output to a file. We can use the less sign to redirect standard input. So this means basically for when I'm running the cut command now in my terminal don't expect or don't assume that this terminal is your standard input but redirect standard inpro input to file 1. And again, this is not a feature of the command cat, 
this is the feature of the shell or uh, the terminal you're running in. So the cut command doesn't see any difference between being invoked without an argument or being invoked like this when we are specifying a standard input redirection. Um, and contrary to that, uh, this one here, or this one, is a feature of the cat uh, command. Because the cat command sees, oh, I've been called with an argument, so the user doesn't want me to read uh, from standard input, it wants me to read from that file. Uh, or he, he or she does wants me to read from that file. Um, while this one is a feature of the shell. And when we do this, it has the same consequences like this one. Because the cut command gets run, it opens the standard input channel, but our shell takes care that the, uh, the standard input channel is not our keyboard, and well, so it doesn't wait for us to type anything, but it uh, replaces our keyboard, if you will, or the standard input channel, with the contents of the file that we've given here. So that basically for standard input and standard output redirection. So you can also say, okay, I want cut or I want the standard input to be redirected from file one and I want to redirect to the standard output to, to file one, two, three. And now, as we see, file 123 has been created and we can um, print the contents and they are just the same as the contents of file 1. So I hope that's, uh, that's clear by now. Now another thing is when, when we're saying this and the standard output is as we we, are, we haven't specified a special standard output redirection, so it gets printed to our terminal. We can now say when we type this pipe character here and send then say for example less. What this means is um, this is again not a feature of the cut command, but it is a feature of the shell. Um, the pipe command tells the shell, okay, don't print the stuff of the first command to the standard output, which would be our terminal, since we've, we have not specified any redirection into a file or something. Um, but take the standard output of the first command and make it the standard input of the second command. So that means what gets printed by cut, in this case, the string from content 1, and now you say pipe it, it gets piped into the last command. So standard output of the, of the left hand side gets connected or chained into the standard input of the right hand side. So what's going to happen here is the cut file is going to read from standard input. The shell has redirected the standard input of the cu for the cut command um, to not read from our um, keyboard, but from file one. And cut then prints to standard output, but the shell, bash or whatever shell you are running, in my case uh, it's, it's uh, zsh. Um, now the shell takes care that it doesn't get the output of the left hand command doesn't get printed on the terminal but it gets redirected into the standard input of the second command which is less so we should yeah and now we see we have the content one which is the result or uh, on standard output of the cat command in our less pager So now, this sounds uh, quite complicated, but as soon as you have thought about it a bit and are aware of the, the concepts of standard input, standard output, and as I've mentioned um, briefly, there's a third one, which is standard error. Um,
but I won't be covering it here just to keep it not too complicated. It's basically a second standard output in which uh, to which usually uh, error messages get printed. Um, you can, for example, you know this this command here. We've seen it a lot of times now. It prints uh, there in the contents of the directory. You can now pipe it into a less, and then what you see is the output that we've otherwise seen in our terminal in a less pager pager here, and these escape stuff things here are just because uh, are the color codes because the less command usually doesn't inter interpret them or it's the the bold style here you can enable it I think with uh, dash R on a less command yeah so now it interprets these uh, special characters but the, that just as a side note um, now once again, in our last uh, video, we've covered the grab command shortly, or, or briefly, and we can now chain our commands. Let's say we want to cat one file one, file two, and no, that's that's uh, not going to work. Uh, file one, file two, and grab test. Then we pipe it into a grab command, and we tell the grab command to search for content and foo, or let's say bar. And then we want the result to we want to look at the result of this uh, operation in the last page because maybe we are fearing that it's otherwise too much in the scrolling all over the place. So now, okay. This here comes from the first file, from the second file, and then from the grep file as we've uh, specified we see all lines that contain the expression bar. Once again in case this is has gone too far or too quickly. File 1 contains just one line, content 1. File 2 contains again just one line, content 2. File grab test contains a lot of lines, some with the string bar in them. So Um, okay, then, or what, what happens here is cut prints all these files right after each other, because that is what cut does when you, um, when you specify more than one file. That's why it's the abbrevi abbreviation for concatenate. So it simply prints these three files in a row, or the content of these, these uh, three files. As we see here is the content of file 1, this is the content of file 2, and grab test is all of the rest of it. And as you can see, if we run this command like this, without any pipe behind it or something, it gets just normally printed onto our, or to our terminal, which is, again, the standard output for any command that you run in a terminal. Now, what happens when we append this grep command? Once again, and we remember dash e means we can specify a search ex expression here that we want to search for, and when we specify more than one expression, then it means search for this one or for the other one. So that means the stuff that we've seen here, which got printed to our terminal, is now, because of the pipe being um, chained into the standard input of our grab command, and since we don't specify an explicit file name to the grab command, it 
defaults to reading from standard input. Um, yeah, like the way you can you can cancel a command line by pressing Control C. Um, just one, I want to demonstrate this before I content bar. Now note uh, notice that I've not specified any file name here. Here I could uh, specify a file name here, but I don't. I just uh, um, specify the two expressions that I'm searching for, and when I run the command, it waits for me to type stuff. Now I type stuff, and as soon as I type a line in which bar is in, it prints it. Or content, it prints it. So the default behavior, as we see, of most of uh, the Linux and Unix commands is to read from uh, standard input, which is by default the terminal you're in. Okay, now once again, file 1, file 2, grab test, and now the pipe, grab e content bar. When I run this, what happens is the contents of these three files con concatenated together get piped into the standard input of the grab command, which is searching for lines in which the word content or the word bar appear. As we see, this seems to be working. Content of file 1 is shown because the word content is in there. The same for the content of file 2. And then for all the lines in which the word bar appears of the grab test file. And one step further, we're saying that we don't want this get printed right on into our console. Um, instead, we want to pipe it into a less command, which lets us lets us scroll to it. In this case, we can't scroll because it's not enough content, but you get the idea. So, in this, uh, for, uh, with this tool of piping things together, you can create very powerful um, yeah, tool tool chains, if you will. Um, and maybe I'll show a few more because there are so many little tiny Linux commands that uh, do a very special thing um, very well. And uh, the fact that you can chain them together with these pipes gives you a lot of power. Like for example, there's a cut command um, let's, for example, try this. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. And when we echo this, then we see just write this value, because that's what echo does. And now we, there's, for example, the, a little command called cut. And you can tell it a delimiter, for example, the, the colon. And you can tell it that you want field number 2 of this so what this cut command does, it delimits this value or sep separates this value with the, where, wherever the delimiter, the colon which, which we specified, appears. And then we, we tell it we want field 2, which is this one. We could also say field 1 or field 3. So just the, just the cut command as a, as a little example of all the tiny tools that the Linux and the Unix world uh, provide. And with this you can combine these, with, with the pipe you can com combine these otherwise not really helpful tools um, and make them a powerful tool, tool chain, whatever. Okay, that's it for now regarding pipes and standard input output redirection thanks for watching <laughs>